April. It's almost over. So let me ask you something. Do you like watching shows that make you cry? Good. Me too. I'm serious because you're lying April or she got to uh, Kimi no Uso or I met the girl under the full bloom cherry blossoms and my fate has begun to change is one of the most emotionally driven roller coasters I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing. Simply put, this is a beautiful, short and sweet anime that ranks my top five favorite series of all time. Relatable characters, nostalgic and goosebump inducing moments, great voice acting, lively animation, and a beautiful yet heartbreaking story, and an unforgettably breathtaking soundtrack all combine to create an unparalleled masterpiece. By the way, I've already seen this show twice before, but I was still bawling like a baby while both re-watching it and editing this video. Yep, it's that rough, people. I'm going to assume that most of you have already seen this show. If you haven't, you should pause right now and go watch it, because this video will contain major spoilers. Originally, I was going to walk through and break down the major points of each episode. I then realized that would take too long and detract from my overall messages. Besides, anyone can watch the show themselves and do that very thing. Instead, I'll focus on the major points of the show as a whole and still point to specific examples from certain episodes. Without further ado, let's take a tour. So in the interest of setting a baseline, I'll describe the plot real quick. Your Lion April tells the story of Kosei Arima, a traumatized young pianist who lost the will and ability to play after the death of his mother. This is short-lived on many levels, however, after he meets a girl named Kaori Miyazono, who ends up changing his life forever. There are two other main characters to mention in addition to Kosei and Kaori. They consist of Tsubaki Suwabe and Ryota Watari. Truthfully, out of all the main characters, Watari is the least developed. So, I think it's best to hit on him first. Albeit more shallow than the rest, Watari still has a few key conversations with Kosei that mean a good deal in the grand scheme. He gives him relationship advice. She likes you, Watari. I would never have a chance with a girl like her. That's got nothing to do with it. Huh? Cute girls have crushes too, man, just like the rest of us. And because she's in love, she's even cuter to you. So you fall for her, even knowing it's not gonna happen. I can never be that kind of guy. I think that's up to the girl to decide. Tells him what he needs to hear to performing poorly. I'm the one who ruined the competition for her. Remember? I failed her. Dude, you're the one she turned to. You know? Truth of it is, watching the two of you play with such spirit kinda got me all fired up myself. And even about what to say and do in situations where he's up a creek without a paddle. Listen, Kosei, this is just my opinion, but I really think that you should go see Kauri, no matter how tough it may be. Because if it was me that she needed right now, I would do anything. She could say the word, and I'd drink toilet water. Just chug it down. He also flaunts his charm, left and right, moving through girls like fruits and vegetables in the produce section, which is why, in the end, it makes total sense why Kaori sought after Kosei instead. Truth be told, Watsuri is a great guy and friend, but just not committed and sincere for the long term. Now we get to the love triangle, if you will, and it's a doozy. Kosei and Tsubaki have been neighbors and friends their entire lives. They've gone to school together, played together, gotten into fights, carried each other home, and even wept on each other's shoulders, all the while either repressing, denying, or remaining totally oblivious as to how the other feels for them. Additionally, Watsuri has also been by their side as their friend growing up. He sums up their relationship very succinctly in the second scene of the first episode. You live right next to each other, been friends forever, and you seek each other out no matter where you are. Just get married already! Don't be an idiot! Throughout the majority of the show, Tsubaki only digs the hole deeper by constantly telling her friend Kashiwagi, as well as Kaori, that Kosei is like her hopeless kid brother and nothing more. She even goes as far to fill this void by getting into a relationship with the old captain of the middle school baseball team, Saito, who is now in high school. Both of them see right through her bullshit, however, and call her out on it, eventually resulting in her high school boyfriend ultimately deciding to dump her fleeting ass. Naturally, who does she go to preventing? That's right, because who else could there be? I think it's appropriate to finally bring Kaori into the mix. Kaori is a fascinating character. She's the completion of both Kosei as a musician and a human being in general. From the very first moment Kosei laid eyes on Kaori, he was starstruck and smitten. He never said this out loud, of course, but that's one of the beauties of anime. It allows us to constantly hear the inner unspoken thoughts of our characters. In that same moment of first meeting her, Kosei was also treated to all the other pieces of Kaori. She's unstable, unrelenting, sarcastic, tempestuous, and capricious, just to name a few. 
With that said, she's also strong-willed and vulnerable. At times, she'll persevere through her music and pester until she gets her way. Other times, she'll break down out of desperation or sadness because of her rapidly declining health. In the end, she's living life to the fullest without regrets and doesn't care about the road behind her. This really displays an important life lesson when it comes to relationships in general. You don't get to pick and choose the qualities in a person with which to interact. Like it or not, all the qualities and descriptors in someone, for better or for worse, make them who they are. So, if you truly care and are serious about commitment, you'll just have to compromise to an extent and find a way to deal with them. I'm going to divert for a few moments here to talk about the voice acting. In any good anime or show in general, exceptional performances are essential to sell both the plot and emotions of the characters. With that said, Your Line April has an all-star English voice acting cast. It includes people like Max Middleman, Erica Harlacker, Erica Mendes, Wendy Lee, Stephanie Shea, Sarah Ann Williams, Christine Marie Cabanos, Patrick Seitz, and Christina V. Whether playing the main characters or supporting cast, they give it their all in every scene and throughout every spoken word. Due to the nature of anime screenplay, with the characters being drawn and or animated mostly motionless, and only certain body parts moving such as a mouth, emotions are displayed and lines delivered very emphatically. There is no doubt in my mind when any person is sad, mad, embarrassed, distraught, or happy. Their feelings play out just like the notes in each song. Max Middleman definitely stands out with his talent for having a range. In many scenes, we hear his effortless monologues, and in others, him pouring his soul into Kosei's sadness and desperation. They ultimately mesh together to form a cohesive, relatable, and memorable character. The same can be said for Erica Harlacker's performance. She spills her voice acting guts in each of Cowdy's lines, from the first scene to the very end of the reading of her letter. Erica Mendez as Tsubaki is a treat as well, especially considering she also voiced Yuki Kono in the second season of Sword Art Online right around the same time. She can play the bossy, big sister role while also sounding incredibly vulnerable. It's a softness that is as welcome as it is appropriate. As you can tell, I have a bias toward the English dubs as opposed to the original Japanese versions. I think it's really for two reasons. Number one, because English is my first language, so it's only a natural personal preference. Truthfully, I had to think about the second reason for a while, but I think I figured it out. I also prefer the English dub because it maintains a level of surreality. You're watching a show created by Japanese artists and set in the country of Japan, all while English voices are coming out of the characters' mouths. Plus, I don't have to worry about reading subtitles. Petty and pedantic? Possibly, but it's just how I feel about anime in general, so to each their own. Anyway, let's wrap it up with the characters real quick. Thanks to Kaori's fiery spirit and unstoppable drive, Kosei was finally able to shed the skin and labels of the past, break free from the abusive expectations of perfection, restart with a newfound appreciation for playing music how he pleases, and have closure with his mother. The twist here is that Kosei also gives Kaori reasons to continue fighting her sickness as long as well as she could, in addition to closure for her own life. It's also for these reasons that Tsubaki despises music. It's been pulling Kosei away from her and the possibility for stronger bonds. She's clearly astute enough to see that he's infatuated with Kaori, despite the act she's been playing with Watari. Obviously, something is holding her back from expressing her true feelings for Kosei. She seems to think every time she tries to get closer to him, the more distant he becomes. Whether because of his naivete, his plans to attend a music school in an entirely different prefecture of Japan, or something else. In fact, she doesn't finally confess her love for Kosei until the very last episode after Kaori's death. It's truly ironic how the loss of someone you cherish can bring you closer to someone else. In this case, Kaori gave them two of the greatest gifts of all, lasting memories and honesty between close friends. To be blunt, the animation styles in Your Lie in April are a bit rambunctious, switching from beautiful color contrasts to standard drawing and character models to even outright chibi-esque hilarity. This can make the mood a little bit hard to read. However, this type of style is imperative in a show like this. There are countless amounts of tear-jerking, heartbreaking moments that are balanced out by the drastic and sudden changes of pace, tone, and style. It also allows the audience to appreciate it that much more. Think about it for a minute. If there was just pure sadness with little to no equilibrium, would you enjoy the show as much? I can say with certainty that I definitely would. Life isn't all sadness or joy or happiness or monotony. It's all the above in a mixed bag. The assortment of beautiful colors, creative drawing styles, and fantastic screenplay creates quite a few memorable moments. Here are some examples that you can all see by my reactions, and I promise you, these are all 100% genuine and not staged. That guy is a pianist, an incredible one. Maybe he could help us out. <laughs> Play us something, huh, mister? Please, please, please. I would, but I, uh, 
I retired. <laughs> you don't want to hear your lame excuses. <laughs> what <is this? laughs> oh my. <laughs> but 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 I I retired. <laughs> when I'm with you, all that stuff Watsudi told me starts to make sense. You're in love with dessert. You're in love with the violin. You're in love with music. Life is a series of moments, and you love them all. Is that why you sparkle the way you do? This feeling I have, I think it's what people would call yearning. Get back here, you little <laughs> coward! <laughs> what more if I can't do it? Don't you understand? I don't want to hear it, Twitter! It's <laughs> bad company already! <laughs> oh, shit. Believe in me. Even a tiny bit. You don't know how close I am right now to just losing heart. <laughs> Last but not least, let's talk about the soundtrack. Simply put, this show is one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. It relishes in an incredible assortment of piano, strings, percussion, and vocals. It even features several infamous classic pieces from legends like Beethoven, Bach, Mozart, and Chopin. Due to the series consisting of only 22 episodes, there are two openings, two endings, and two songs with lyrics, but they do not disappoint in the slightest. The beats are catchy, the instrumentals are on point, and the voices are borderline ethereal. Every track sets the mood perfectly, ranging from an upbeat and playful, to sad and gut-wrenching, to suspenseful and outrageous. While watching this show again, I couldn't help notice and appreciate just how essential a soundtrack is for visual media. None of the scenes in this show would evoke anywhere near the same response without musical accompaniment. It breathes life into each moment. This actually stretches into a broader topic that is repeated several times in Your Lie in April, and that is the impact of music itself. Music is universal. No matter the age, ethnicity, religious affiliation, birthplace, or situation, some days we'll want to listen to hard rock. Others will be reserved for pop on the radio. Then, we may want to sit back and relax with some lo-fi beats. Regardless of who you are or where you come from, music affects and reaches us all. Throughout the show, the biggest question asked is some variation of, did it reach them? Every musician character, from Kaori to Kosei and Takashi to Emi, and even Mike and Nagi, wants to be ingrained in the memory as well to hear them. Whether they fully understand it or not at the time, they are making a difference to those people. When it is realized, and they're able to take a step back to see the fruits of their labor, the emotional floods are released. It's revealed that both Kaori and Emmy decided to play music after seeing Kosei perform for the first time. Music is funny that way, and personally, I recaptured a lost love of the classics during my reviewing. The music in this series still both enchants and haunts me. It also influenced and convinced me even more to pursue a side passion for music as well. Memories are fond and cruel, and I will cherish them for the rest of time. So, to sum it all up, if you haven't seen this show by now, seriously, what the hell are you waiting for? It's a must-see for any fan of anime, music, or just a great story. However, it's also a gem that should be enjoyed in short bursts as opposed to treatments of constant viewings. In other words, all things are enjoyed in moderation. If you want to constantly listen to the soundtrack, like me, that's perfectly alright. But do yourself a favor by not watching the show to the point of desensitivity. I only watch it once every year or every few years, and it allows my brain to refresh and enter blank slate mode. The combination of beautiful animation, superb storytelling, relatable characters, great voice acting, and incredible music will turn your face into a faucet. In the end, this and many other elements allow the anime to flourish and cement itself as one that will remain an animated classic for years to come. Arigato. Well, that about wraps everything up. If you like what you saw, smash that like button and leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell to be notified about more content. My name is Kozikai, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!